Hi, this is Gabe at FluentForever.com. In these four videos, I'm going to show you the bare essentials of phonetics and spelling for Arabic. If you're using one of my pronunciation trainers, don't worry about memorizing this stuff. The trainer will do that for you. Just watch and pay attention. Everything you see here will show up sooner or later within the trainer. I'll be going through Arabic using the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. I do this because this lets us simplify our discussion quite a bit, since I only need to talk about 29 symbols, many of which you know already, instead of trying to wade through nearly 120 spelling rules. So that said, let's get started. We'll break this discussion up into four parts. The first will talk about the Arabic alphabet, the second will discuss Arabic's consonants, the third will cover the vowels, and the fourth will cover a few of Arabic's spelling rules. And just so that we're really accurate with our examples, I have a native speaker here, Mustafa, who will be helping us out. Hi. Before we start, I want to briefly discuss the dialect issue in Arabic, because it's kind of a huge central issue. Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering Modern Standard Arabic, or MSA. This is the Arabic you're going to see on Al Jazeera, for instance, and it's more or less the only standard form of Arabic that's going to be understood to some extent, no matter what country you're visiting. MSA is basically a modernized form of the classical Arabic used in the Quran. The tricky thing here is that no one speaks MSA as their first language. Arabic native speakers learn and speak local dialects first, and then, once they get to school, they learn how to speak proper MSA. This is a phenomenon known as diglossia. It's where one language community actually uses two languages depending upon context. This was actually the case in Europe in the Middle Ages. Educated Europeans all learned Latin, and that language was in some ways a mark of a good education. Nowadays, there's a pretty heated debate in the language learning community about whether it's better to learn MSA first or just start with a dialect, and there's pros and cons to both approaches. But that said, in this video, we'll be focusing on MSA, and that's for one main reason. Because the pronunciation topics we're covering here are going to be relevant, no matter what dialect you're learning. Phonetically, all of the dialects start with the sounds of MSA, and generally they simplify from there, getting rid of a few of the trickier consonants. So, if you know all of the sounds of MSA, then generally you know all the sounds in all of the dialects. So it's a really nice starting point, no matter what route you're going to take through the language. So, let's get started. In this first video, we're not going to cover the entire Arabic alphabet. That would be pretty overwhelming. But I want you to get a feel for how the alphabet works. So, we'll start with an example. This is the Arabic letter B. It makes a B sound. And it looks something like a boat with a dot underneath. One of the things that's super interesting and challenging about the Arabic alphabet is that a letter will change shape depending upon where it shows up within a word. And I'll give you some examples with ba. There's a ba at the beginning of burj. Arabic reads from right to left, so it's on the right side. It's that right angle looking thing with the dot underneath. Here it is in the middle of jabal, at the end of dhib, and at the end of ab. And if you're super strict about it, there are technically four forms of ba in these words. There's an initial form, which is a kind of cut-off form designed to connect to the next letter to its left. There is a medial or middle form, which has connectors on both sides. There is a final form, which has a connector on the right side. And then there's an isolated form, which you'll either use when you're just talking about the letter on its own, as in this is the letter ba, uh, or when it's at the end of a word, and the second to last letter refuses to connect to the left, which is something that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, now, for this letter, the final and isolated forms look basically the same. The final form just has a tiny connecting line attached to its right. And the initial and medial forms also look basically the same. They're both kind of a cut-in-half version of the bigger, isolated, or final forms. And this sort of pattern is really common within the Arabic alphabet. Of the 28 letters in the alphabet, 16 of them do this. Here's lem, for instance, as it shows up in laymun, qalam, feel, and qawl. Again, it basically just has two forms, rather than four, and the initial and medial forms are basically just cut-off versions of the final or isolated forms. Now, there are a couple of other patterns I want to show you. So let's start by introducing you to the letter dal, as in dub, badla, yad, and haddad. Now, what's interesting about del is that it refuses to connect to any letters to the left. There's no connector here at all. So, if another letter comes after it, well, a few things can happen. Let's look at what's going on in bedle. We start with a ba, which connects smoothly to del, but then del refuses to connect to the next letter, lem, 
So we need a form of lem that doesn't have a connector on the right side, which means we need to use the initial form. So the word initial is a bit misleading here, since we're using it in the middle of a word. Basically, the way this works is this. If you want to figure out which of the four forms of each letter to use, you need to figure out whether there's a letter on the left, on the right, on both sides, or neither, that you can legally connect to. And letters like DAL, there are seven of them all in all, don't allow any connections to the left. You can see that in HA, for instance. Here's HA in HILAL, SEHM, WUJH, and MIYAH. All four forms are really different from each other. And so letters like these are kind of a pain. You just have to memorize them. Thankfully, there aren't many letters like HA. Um, there's just a couple more things I want to cover before we dive into all the consonants and vowels in the next pair of videos. The first of those things are, where on earth are the vowels? For instance, we said this word was dub, and that this is del, and makes a d sound. And this is ba, and makes a b sound. So where's that u uh sound coming from? And how do you know to say dub rather than dib or deb? And not only that, but that b at the end of the word is actually pronounced extra long. It's dub rather than dub. But where's that written? Well, let me show you a different version of this same word. There are three little symbols here that were not on the original word I gave you. This cursive backwards R looking thing. That's a dhamma, which is Arabic's u vowel. You stick it on top of a del and you're going to get du. Now, that little cursive W looking thing? That's called shedda, and it's a consonant doubler. It tells you to pronounce a consonant twice as long. Here, it's turning dub, turns into dub. And that circle? That's sukun. It basically tells you that there is not going to be a vowel coming after this letter. So this word isn't dubba, or dubbi, or dubbu. It's just dub. And so, why didn't I show you all these symbols earlier? The Arabic writing system is known as an abjad. With a couple of small exceptions that we'll address in video 3, every letter in the Arabic alphabet is a consonant. And in most texts, it's the reader's job to supply the vowels. On the surface, this seems a little bit nuts. Like, why give readers only some of the information about how to read things? But even in English, which is not an abjad, you can knock out all the vowels in a sentence and get something that isn't that hard to read. Nowadays, we're actually starting to use this kind of abjad-like shorthand in English because of Twitter and texting. And this works just fine, as long as you're already familiar with all of the words you're reading. Which, if you're watching this video, you probably aren't. And as such, it is super helpful to see the vowels too. These little symbols in Arabic are called diacritics, and for the rest of our videos, and in the pronunciation trainer, I'll be using them in our examples. In all likelihood, you'll see diacritics in most Arabic textbooks and student resources. And this is a good thing. They're really useful in the beginning. And then, as you pick up more vocabulary, you can kind of wean yourself off of them without too much trouble. So that said, let's review. In this video, my main goal was to familiarize you with the way that the Arabic alphabet sticks letters together. Namely, that it's written from right to left, and that each letter has an initial form, a medial form, a final form, and an isolated form. We begin with the letter B, as in Burj, Jebel, Zib, and Ab. And for this letter, the initial and medial forms look just about the same, although the medial form has an extra connector on the right, and the isolated and final forms also look pretty much the same, although the final one also has a connector on the right, which is a pattern that you'll see in most of Arabic's letters, like we saw in lem. We then talked about del, which is a letter that didn't allow connections to any letters that follow it on the left. There were seven letters that behaved like this, and their important characteristics were that all four forms looked approximately the same, and that they always forced the letter afterwards to change over to some form that doesn't have one of the connectors on the right. So for the word bedle, that third letter, lem, is in its initial form since that's the form that doesn't have a connector on the right, but still allows it to connect to the next letter on the left. The last example we talked about was HA, which was one of Arabic's few letters that really did look different in all four forms. Finally, we talked about Arabic's missing vowels, those diacritics that were left out of most Arabic, but included in most Arabic study materials. These tell you what vowel, if any, comes after each consonant, and whether the consonants should be doubled or not. With that, we're through with video one, and we're ready to start delving into Arabic's consonants 
in video two.